we're God's developing us to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. So it's exciting to see how the shifting has started. Tired neighbor, the shifting has started. The shifting has started. Amen. I read a post that says, if you see me 2019 and you see me in 2020, I don't look the same. Come Amen. On. We probably look the same, but our hearts are different. Amen. Amen. Our minds are different. Amen. The way we, we feel is different. Amen. We're not we're not a complacent people no more. And, and if we've been complacent, which I've been there in different positions in my life, you you get frustrated. You know, you, you get like, ah, man, this isn't comfortable no more. If you ever lay down in bed for too long, you begin to, uh, you're not resting no more. You begin to feel like, ah, uh, you begin to feel tired. Amen. You, be, you begin to feel like a body ache and because you've been laying down for too much. Yeah. Amen. 2020, God's saying, all those that have been laying down, amen, all those that have been complacent, amen, I'm not asking you to stir yourself up. I'm going to pour the spirit in your life to begin amen. to stir up the person that I've called you to be. And I believe in the midst of this, God is going to uh, build givers, going to build tithers, amen. amen, God is going to build people that are going to be generous, amen, that are going to be able to reflect the spirit of God in their life, that are going to be able to serve generous, that are going to be able to love generous, that are going to be able to be the picture of what the church is supposed to be, amen. even though we, they may not come to the church, the way they see you will be the image of the church. Amen. So I really see how this year, amen, God is challenging leadership. If you say, man, they're preaching of a leader, or they, they, they spoke and they challenged me to be this caliber of a leader, but I see myself here, amen, you're going to begin to see yourself mature. You're going to be seeing yourself grow to the next level. We're not asking you to get there. We're asking you to progress in your leadership. What I mean by that is the sense of being spirit-led. Uh, being spirit led, and I love the fact that while Pastor Mike was preaching this this Sunday, and he he said cough. Amen. The 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 the, the symbol of cough is the C with the dot. Amen. But in more depth, it is it is uh, the, the another meaning for it is a bent over will. Amen. And I believe 2020, our will is going to be being able to be surrendered to God. And when you allow your will to be surrendered to God, amen, you begin to release. You begin to let go all the things that try to pull you down or pull you back from allowing you to step forward into the purpose. In the same way, amen, Jesus at the garden had to release his will, had to bend his will over to God because he was in a tight place. He refused to let that define him. Amen. And I believe 2020, amen, the spirit is going to begin to move us in a way where we're going to start saying, God, not my will, well, God. God, not my desire, God. You know where I stand, God. And, and I'm beginning to turn over. Amen. God is beginning to redeem. But God is going to begin to turn over to, to begin to take and to begin to pay a price for everything that you feel you need to pay a price for or do to allow you to run freely. Oh my God. Come amen. On. Come on. Amen. So. Let's go to the word, amen. Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 9. Amen. I really am excited for this word because this is uh, Nehemiah. Amen. If you know anything about Nehemiah, he's a builder. Amen. He, he felt the desire to move. He felt the desire to build. He felt the desire to be a part of something while he was in the place of comfort, while he was in the place of, of a palace, while he was in the place where he was okay. But yet he decided to lower himself to a place of building. Amen. And this story is so important to the way we see uh, our life, the way we see uh, leadership, the way we see church, the way we see our purpose and calling, because it begins to give us a new mold in the way we live. Amen. Amen. If we could start, um, if we could read in the, in the message translation. It says, um, okay, go to the NLT. Let's see which one it was. <coughs> Okay, it says, they were just, okay, this was a time where, let's go to verse 7, where Nehemiah stepped out of faith. Nehemiah broke out of the word he was. Nehemiah uh, stepped out, and the accusations and things began to be said about Nehemiah that were false. So this is where this story takes off. He says, he also reported that you have appointed prophets in Jerusalem to proclaim about you. Look, there is a king in Judah. You can be very sure that this report will get back to the king. So I suggest you come and talk it over with me. Amen. I don't know if you've ever been in a place or situation where people begin to falsely accuse you. Amen. Where people uh, have a, a wrong jacket over your life. 
and then where people uh, judge you by the way you once were and no longer decide to take it off to see who you are now. Mm. Amen. Nehemiah was in this place where he came wholeheartedly to want to build, but there were a few people that said, man, this work is happening. I don't want it to happen. I don't, I don't, uh, I need to do something to hinder the work. And so the, this person sent a message to the king and sent a message to Nehemiah and said, yo, this guy's trying to take over his own kingdom. He's trying to be his own king. He's trying to take advantage and, and take whatever you've given him. And they were falsely accusing him. They were falsely telling things about him that weren't true. Amen. Let's go to the next verse. It says, I replied, there is no truth in any part of your story. You are making up the whole thing. My neighbor, it's all made up. It's all made up. Amen. It's all made up. Don't listen, amen, to whatever it is that the people tell you. Don't listen to whatever it is people try to point the finger and say, that's, that's oh, man, have you heard about him? Or this is what he's doing. Or, oh, man, he, he's this way there and this way another way. When, when you haven't even got to know the person, they're saying, get to know the whole thing. I mean, before you try to judge me, before you try to pin me to a corner by your perspective, get to know the whole thing. Get to know the truth of the situation because what you're thinking isn't really the thought of what's happening. Mm. And Nehemiah was just trying to build. Nehemiah was just trying to grow. Nehemiah was just trying to get the people back together to move forward, to begin to restore what God has purpose. Next verse. It says, they were just trying to intimidate us. Most of the time, why things are being are happening in your life, why you're hitting certain areas in life, is just the enemy trying to intimidate you. In the moment of intimidation, it's like a stare down. Are you going to back down? Are you going to bow to what I'm accusing that you are? Are you going to accept what I'm, the way I see you? Or are you going to understand that it's an intimidation? It's a, it's a mirage of what's really trying to happen. It's false. It's fake. And it says they were just trying to intimidate us, imagining that they could discourage us and stop the work. Amen. I don't know, but God is going to continue to do the work here in Victory Outreach Southwest Bakersfield. Amen. Whatever happens, happens, but God is the one in control. God is the one that has anointed our pastors. God is the one that is developing our leaders. God is the one that has brought us this far. And if God has been able to produce, amen, a church that started with 20 people, if God has been able to produce the finances to pay off the land, believe me, God is in the mix. God is in the mix of doing something. If God is, was able to pull us out of the lifestyle that we once lived, to be a, a part of a ministry, to be saved, to be transformed. Believe me, there is a God that is on the move. There is a God that is existing. There is a God with purpose. There is a God with reason in this church. And Nehemiah was coming to the place where he was battling with fear and destination. Where fear was, came on the crossroads of his destiny. Where fear came in the crossroad of him deciding to build or retreat. And that was the whole goal of why the enemy tried to send what was happening. So in this crossroad of his fear, of him saying, man, I'm facing a king now. At any moment, they could decide to execute me. At any time, they could come to try to destroy everything that we worked hard for. At, any, at the drop of a dime, everything could be lost. But Nehemiah refused. To accept fear over destiny. Amen. Nehemiah refused to accept the fear of the voice of fear over the destiny over his life. Over the purpose in his life. Over the, of, over the cause of what God was doing in his life. Amen. And Nehemiah believed, seen himself like, man, if I came down from the palace, I'm not going to come and see what I can do and go back. No, if I came down from the palace, it's because I'm going to build. It's because I'm gonna, uh, my life is gonna produce something. My life is gonna Amen. build something. That's my life it. is gonna, it's gonna be a legacy. My life is gonna leave a mark. My life is gonna make a stamp. My life, my life isn't just gonna end where it ends. And I believe that's where church, the Southwest Bakersfield is at. Amen. That God brought us either out of the palace, or out of the, the, the mud of where we were, to be where we're at now because He wants our life to make an impact. Amen. He wants our life to begin to grow within who we are to allow us to be the leaders he's called us to be so that we can begin to move in the empowerment of who God is. Amen. Wow. Amen. And the word kaf is made up of two words. And the symbol is like a line with a di downward, downward diagonal line 
with the C behind it. And one word means potential, and one word means actual. And the word potential is defined by the empowerment of the spirit. It is the empowerment of the spirit, the potential of what God's giving you. God's giving you everything that you needed. God has given you everything that, that it takes to produce the life that you want to see. God is giving you that. Second Peter 1.3, we're not going to go there, but he's giving you everything. And the potential, the purpose, the fulfillment of what God has for you is there. There is a potential. There is a purpose, yes. But God is saying, I don't want you just to be walking around with a head full of potential. I don't want you to be walking around with a life full of I could have, I might have, or maybe I, I should have, or this and that. But God is saying, I want the potential to meet the actual. I want the potential to meet your natural. I want my superpower, uh, my empowering spirit. To begin to meet the reality. That's it. That's wow. it. Come and on. that's what the word, that's what 2020 cough means. Also, we're saying, look, you might have been walking around in potential before. You might have tapped into God and said, man, I really feel like God is calling me to this and that. Amen. Yes, he is. Hear the call. But God say, look, this year I want it to be different. I don't want you just to know you're a good singer. I don't want you to know you're just blessed financially. I don't want you to know you have a gift or teaching or a gift with people. I don't want you just to know. Mm. Amen. I want to begin to shift the knowing to being. Amen. And that's why I said in the beginning, it's time to be about it. Hey. Amen. Because God is shifting. Yeah. Amen. God is turning around. Amen. Our potential to purpose. Right. Our, our potential to destiny. Our potential to reality. Amen. That we're not walking around as Christians just knowing. Amen. But this is the year for you to walk in it. And I liked how Pastor Mike said it. That stirred me up. What he said? It means hand in hand. It means the redemption of Christ. Mm. The redemption of Christ means up. I have redeemed. I have paid a price. You walk freely in. You walk liberally in yeah. the empowerment of my spirit. And he said redemption is the workless, the workless, not the worthless, the workless empowerment of God in your life. Wow. And I said, God, if, if that's the potential and that's the purpose, then let me walk in that. Amen. Amen. So, Isaiah, Isaiah 41.10 in the message, uh, it's a word that I really believe. It's a word that, that, that God is going to do something special for us that they might have ended week or, or gone into the, the year or feeling a certain way. It, I, it's a year to, to get excited. It says, don't panic. Victory South, Southwest, don't panic. Amen. Amen. Don't panic about a building. Don't panic about a, a budget. Don't panic about this and that. It says, I'm with you. There's no need to fear for I'm your God. I'll give you strength. I'll help you. I'll hold you steady. Keep a firm grip on your life. Come on now. I don't know if that's a promise to you or not, but that's if I don't know any better, that's a promise. That's right. Amen. He said, don't panic. No fear. Amen. You will have the strength you need, and I will help you, and I will hold you through it, and I will strengthen you through it. So I say this today, church, that whatever God has purpose within the church, let's do it. Whatever God has purpose within our ministry, let's continue to move on it. Whatever God is challenging through our passion, whatever God is speaking through our passions, Let's begin a church. Let's be a church that allows us to move in that. Amen. That we no longer listen to fear. That we hear destiny. That we hear where, where God is leading us. That we hear where God is taking us. Where we hear the voice of our passion. We say, you know what? That's, that's where you're taking us, God. I'm not going to let fear hold me down no more. The fear to release. Amen. The fear to step in. The fear to forgive. The fear to believe. Amen. On what God is doing in my life. Amen. Come on. Come on. I mean, can I get an amen? Amen. As we get the worship team up, we will not be a church that is held down by fear. We will not be a church that is afraid or lacking strength. Amen. Because God is the God who has chose this church. And be, and it's the in Isaiah, real quick, it talks about strength. And it talks about strength. And it says. Something that, that caught my attention is to have, to take, to retain, 
to sustain, to keep a hold of, and to support. Amen. That is the call for our church to begin to strengthen the purpose of what God has within our ministry. To begin to support and sustain the belief that God is beginning to show you. What God is beginning to do, that you continue to hold on to that belief. That you continue to hold on to that victory. That you continue to hold on to who God is in your life. And not begin to release it for this or that reason. Amen. You have the worship team. And I say this. That as we step into this year. That we don't loosen the grip. Nehemiah refused to loosen his grip. He said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna loosen the grip of building. I'm not gonna loosen the grip because I know what God's did in my life. Amen. I'm not gonna loosen the grip to this hammer or the sword because God has been too good and, and, and God spoke to me and I'm I'm here because God has purposed me. And Nehemiah was refusing to release it. And um, if you were to go down in that chapter, another person came to me and said, Hey, you gotta you gotta stay in the temple, war is coming. People are going to kill. People are going to come after the work. And Nehemiah said, well, God said that? But something stirred inside Nehemiah and said, nah. And a, a person of position like me, I will not stay in the temple while there's a war. A, a person of potential and a position like me, I will go out there and fight because I know what God has purpose. Amen. And that's what God is saying to us as a church. We're, no, we're not in position to shrink back. We're not in position to hold back. We're not in position to stay in comfort or to stay in the perspective of what we see things. But God, the same way Nehemiah said, yo, I'm going to step out. I don't care what happens. If that's what you think your God is saying, then that's what you're seeing. But God has shown me something different. And I'm going to step out of this temple. And I'm going to believe for what God has in my life. Amen. And Nehemiah said he refused to loosen the grip. Amen. I love how we broke it down in 1 Timothy 1.19. It says, yo. Yo, yo. <laughs> he had verse 8, verse 18. He's saying, Look, don't loosen your firm grip on the faith that you have. Don't loosen the firm grip of the way you've been believing. Don't loosen the firm grip of how you what God is doing in your life. And then go down to the next verse. And it says, keep a firm grip on your faith and on yourself. After all, this is the fight we're in. Amen. Amen. The same way God said, look, I don't need you to fight for a victory. I just need you to keep your grip on it. That's right. I don't need you to begin to stress out and do all these things. I don't need you to start uh, breaking your head on certain things. I just need you to keep your grip. I just need you to keep your grip on the sword of faith. I just need you to keep your grip on the word of God. I just need you to keep your grip on my rest over your soul. Amen. And you're going to begin to see faith taking everything that I have purpose, everything that I've seen for your life. It says, after all, this is a fight we're in. There's, there are some, you know, who by relaxing their grip and thinking anything goes, have made a thorough mess of their faith. He said, look, there's been people that have loosened their grip and have believed other things. But I, I release them to, to live their life. But I say, look, you that are here, keep a grip on your faith. Amen. Keep a grip on the purpose, on the spirit of God. Keep a grip of this thing. Amen. Saying if anything's going to happen in this church, if we're going to build, if we're going to see things come to pass, I love how Pastor Mike said, we got to have discipline. Amen. Discipline and consistency to where we're going, to what you want to see in life, to what you what well, God has purpose for your life, for the vision of this church. we got to be consistent and disciplined. Amen. Amen. And I really feel like, man, I, I need to sharpen up in some areas. I need to, I need to get down to the nitty-gritty in some areas, man, and, and begin Hallelujah. to understand where God is taking me Amen. and the Amen. position that I'm at. And, and, and how much I'm able to be a support. Mm. Amen. If we were to all be those church members that said, you know what, Pastor, I'm with you, man. I'm not here to judge you, Nehemiah. I'm not here to look at you different, Nehemiah. I'm not here to give you false reports. But I'm here to build with you. I'm not going to release my grit. The enemy tried to lie to my mind, believe a false report about you to loosen my grip and say, hey, they're going to come and kill us. I need, I need to take off. 
hiding them. They didn't, they didn't retreat into the comfort of their own precaution. I don't know if you heard me. A lot, it was either retreat into the precautions of their fear or begin to step into destiny. Amen. And Pastor Mike ended the year saying, let's roar. Mm. Amen. Let's roar with belief. Let's speak. In 2020 is the year of speaking it, of believing it, of understanding that Jesus Christ redeemed us so we can have it. Amen. So that we can walk in it. Amen. And this is a year of walking in it. A smooth transition into our purpose. A smooth transition into who we need to be. Amen. If you're able just to release your grip on your will and have a firm grip on faith, you begin to see situations turn around. You're going to see your heart bend and surrender. It's because there's times when we get tired of being angry and offended. There's times when we get tired of feeling a certain way and and that we're not even, even able to walk into the church freely because you feel a certain way. God say, look, I need you to bend over, surrender that part of your heart that you've been holding on to. Release it. That part of your life, release it. On this part of your life, have a firm grip. We, there's plenty more stories of a firm grip. Warriors, men of God, that didn't loosen their grip. And they were able to see the victory in a situation that looked the odds were against them. Thousands against one, hundreds against one, and these were men that refused to loosen their grip. And if God did it for them, He's able to do it for us. Amen. If He did it through men that were distressed, disturbed, and in debt, Amen. God is able to do it in us. God is able to do it in us. Amen. God is gonna do it through us. Amen. God is fulfilling it in us. God has given us everything that we need. God has purposed us. We, need to, we don't need to go look for something more. We don't need to go searching for other things. Everything God has is in us. God didn't make a mistake by placing you here. God didn't make a mistake by putting and birthing in you when he birthed you. And then we just gotta activate it. We gotta move in it. We gotta refuse to shut the mouth of the eyes and say, man, you're speaking too loud to me. You're speaking too loud to me. We're making you want to believe this, but I refuse to believe that. You're making me want to lose my grip on this. You're making me want to throw Mold of yourself so you can accept who I am, then you can 
accept the gift of my surrenders, the gift of the cross, where he released the spirit and he poured out over everybody the, 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 the blessings now, the fulfillment of God. So you don't have to come into the state of mind and say, now I have to go through this because he went through that, or I have to face this because he faced that, or this is the way I deal with situations because, you know, I need to take medicine to my own hands. No. No, that's not the gospel. The gospel of grace is you got to accept that faith will take. you got to accept and believe it and faith will take it. Amen. And we will see what God's purpose for us come to pass. Amen. Isaiah 41 10. I love that. And if you continue to read down, it says, I've taken care of your enemies. What are you worried about? Your enemies, I've taken care of that. That's right. What are you worried about? Your strength. Believe me, i got enough strength in my, in my will. What are you worried about? Finances? Believe me, i got enough finances in my will. What else are you worried about? What else are you, is, is, is filling up your mind to pull you away from purpose and destiny? Uh, what, what fear are you believing that is not allowing you to walk in that fullness? He uh. said, I've already had it in the well. In Isaiah, it talks about that he birthed the well in you. And that's a salvation birthed the well in your life. That everything that you need to draw out of, you don't need to look for it, work for it, or go chase it. It says, just look inwardly. The spirit hey. in you. Just take it out. Uh -huh. Refresh yourself. Get clarity. Find strength in the spirit. And if you continue to believe like that, you're going to see yourself taking off. Man, I don't need to be under everybody. Can you can you teach me? Can you decide for this and that? You're going to begin to get in. And you're going to begin to be led. Amen. You're going to begin to catch on. Amen. You can't always be taught everything. The Spirit will teach you. That's the right. Spirit will allow you to catch. Yeah. Amen. Nobody taught me a might to be faithful. Nobody taught me a might to keep holding on. Don't believe the lies. Nobody told him to. Nobody taught him how to how to surrender himself to the work of God. Nobody taught this. Nobody taught Esther to 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 learn how to be a queen. The last queen refused to follow the king, so she got fired. So Esther came in and said, you know what? I don't know what it is to be a queen. I was just a woman out there minding my own business among the Jews. And I'm in this place, and I don't really know what to do. And Mordecai said this. In chapter 4, verse 14. And saying, look. You. God might send somebody to rescue the Jews. God might send someone to rescue because that's who God is. But for you and your family, we don't know what's going to happen. But uh, Esther, I'm telling you, you became queen, probably for a good reason. And God is saying, church, you became in position in life perfectly, maybe for a reason. Maybe you're blessed financially for a reason. Maybe you're blessed with time to serve for a reason. Maybe you're blessed with talents for a reason. Mordecai was telling the queen, maybe he became a queen for a reason. Amen. So break the silence. Break the silence of your fear. Break the silence of what you're feeling. Yeah. Break the silence of your emotions because your emotions are, are telling you, don't move. You're good. You're the queen. Nothing's going to happen. Your emotions are telling her, no, nah, I'm good. I don't, I, don't know what be, I don't know how to stand to be a leader. She wasn't taught to be a leader. She wasn't taught to be this queen that redeems and does the sh shift and the turn around for the Jews. She didn't know that. She didn't be, she didn't know what taught her this. She was a helpless, unknowing, ending person. They got brought up because God chose her. And at times us as a church, we feel this unqualified. We feel like we, we can't produce it. But God is saying, stop looking at that. Where I placed you and where I put you is because I know what I have. I know what I'm doing. Amen. And she said, man, I'm going to bend over my will. And if I die, I die. And if I go, and if I go speak to the king and he kills me, so be it. But uh, there's, I, I caught, I caught what it is to care for the people. I caught what it is to to just look further than myself and what I feel. Uh, yes, I have the silver platter waiting for me, but I'm not looking at that. I see more. And some of us are good. Some of us are okay, but God, but we there's a stirring inside. He said, man, there's you could be okay, yeah. You'll be financially blessed, but what about the next person? Huh? What about the purpose of why God is not the building, but the souls that are going to be produced out of there? Uh, why our pastors have surrendered their lives to say, man, whatever hits I hit, I'm going to continue to love. I'm going to continue to care for people. And the leaders that are next to me say, you know what? I don't get paid for this. 
I don't, I don't make a living off of this. I, I do this because I'm like Esther and I care for the people and I'm, I'm releasing my will and I'm releasing who I am. Amen. And these are people that were taught, people that caught it, people that were beginning to understand that at the end of the day they were just holding on to who God is and believing that that was more than enough. And Mr. the church this evening, if we could all stand up. I believe as our, our pastor is speaking direction, as our pastor is speaking vision, as our pastor is bringing uh, direction and guidance to where, you know, where, where we're going, amen. I believe us as the people, at times we go through hard times because we're hearing it and we're battling with change. We're hearing it we're battling to shift because we're, we're not fully understanding. And when you don't fully understand, it's hard to be, to be on board to something you don't really understand fully. It's hard at times to make a shift or change when you're not seeing everything you're seeing. And I believe that, that before the year takes off, God is going to strengthen the grip. God is going to strengthen the grip. God is going to strengthen us to be able to grab a firm grip of where God is going to take us so we're not juggling the baton, so we're not juggling the way we're going to build, that we're going to be a church that knows, that understands, that begins to comprehend where the Spirit is leading us. Amen. And I believe that, that a lot of us are going to be strengthened once more. I really believe what Isaiah 41 10 said. I really believe that. I really believe that, that, that it's a new beginning. It's a new beginning and, and something's, all the promises and everything that's being said, is, God is doing it. God is doing it. Amen. So I challenge you in this altar call to come up to begin to allow your, the, the, the spirit to begin to grip in your heart. Before you grip it, you let the spirit grip your heart. Then let the Spirit begin to grip your mind, begin to grip your perspective, amen, and begin to transform and shift and, and, and bring down or mold it to be what it needs to be. Amen. So, verse 2, we're able to sing a song.